an altercation with police officers yesterday. Eleven others are still behind bars tonight. This all unfolded, the, the clashes at least, during demonstrations yesterday where municipal workers were out marching to demand an increase from the city of Tswane. Now the financially troubled metro says it cannot afford to pay any salary hikes. It's also criticized those who were participating in what it's called an illegal industrial action, mayor, or un unprotected, in fact, industrial action. Let's speak now to the mayor of Tswane, Celia Brink. A very good evening to you, mayor. I'm grateful for your time. Are you still not going to budge on your position on the wage issue? Let me just first of all say that we do have the greatest respect for the role of organized labor, union membership, and collective bargaining. This is not a uh, sporadic decision not to pay salaries and benefits. Uh, when the budget was passed in June, um, we decided that the city simply doesn't have money for salary increases, and part of the resolutions were that the city would approach the bargaining council to seek exemption from paying these salaries. So all within the framework of collective bargaining. And the simple reason is, as I mentioned, we don't have the means. Uh, Tswane is in need of a financial rescue, and that's why we have a rescue plan. Um, by not paying these salary increases, we save 600 million rand. I say save, but it's money that we simply don't have at all. So unpopular decisions in these circumstances have to be made. Councillors are also forfeiting salary increases, and it's better to do it now to make the decision to communicate it as it was communicated to organized labor uh, a month ago, uh, than to wait two, three months down the line and not be able to pay salaries at all. So that's the situation that we're in. Uh, and no, we're not going to budge through violence and intimidation uh, because that would unravel the entire collective bargaining process as well as law and order. You've been saying since your election as Mayor of Tony that the city's coffers are basically run dry, yet and still workers are seemingly not convinced. They believe that you can, in fact, pay them these increases of between 3 and 5.4 percent, if, if I've got the figures right. When the city says it doesn't have money, put in context for our viewers what that means. How broke are you? So we've got substantial debt to Eskom and Rand Water. Uh, there's been breakdowns in our revenue value chain. Uh, and our financials uh, received a disclaimer um, for, for various reasons, including our inability to control cash flow and so forth. So there has been substantial mismanagement in Swane, which needs to be uh, redressed. But the other issue, Temekile, is in 2019, an 18% salary increase was granted to Tswane employees outside of collective bargaining. Now, that was a substantial benefit to the employees that was enjoyed nowhere else in the country. Um, but it came at a massive cost to the city. So to say that, uh, you know... The, the circumstances of, of, of workers is, is not ideal. We can agree with that, tools of trade and so forth, but it's not entirely true uh, that, that workers have been left destitute, and we have to look at what we're able to sustain. So until we can achieve a measure of financial recovery, uh, we won't be able to pay these increases, but it's not just that we won't pay the increases. We'll seek exemption at the bargaining council. We'll follow the proper processes, and we ask that the trade unions make the same argument there or engage an argument there instead of going on unprotected strikes and punishing the residents of Tswane. But let me just add that it's not uh, the majority of, of Tswane employees. It's just a critical mass that uh, in, in pockets of the city have gone on unprotected strikes and are intimidating others not to go to work. And this is what is making the situation so very frustrating uh, also for communities who suffer the delays in power outages being attended to and water outages being attended to and so forth. I'll get to the issue around intimidation and how you're going to deal with that, but I want to ask you first about what you mentioned a short time ago about how you are unable to pay these increases now. When would you be able to pay by your forecast? So uh, in terms of our financial recovery plan, we're taking a number of steps, including trying to reduce water and electricity losses, trying to increase revenue collection, um, the metering of consumption, the billing of metering, effective credit control. We've cut non-essential expenses. 
uh, luxuries that, that uh, in, in, in many other places uh, still exist. Uh, we are appointing a new management team, a permanent CFO, to restore the financial controls. We're working hard to address the issues raised by the Auditor General. And as part of the funding plan, which I just mentioned, which was approved by the Municipal Council, including several parties, uh, we said that Council must approve, uh, must apply to the Bargaining Council for an exemption for this financial year. So we're asking for a reprieve for one financial year so that uh, we can stabilize the situation in Tswane uh, and make sure that, that this is not a burning platform. It's not a municipality that cannot pay salaries as so many other municipalities uh, in this country that haven't looked after their financial affairs. So just on the issue of intimidation, which I said we talked about, you say in your statement that you will not tolerate what you say is um, illegal strike action, the no work, no pay principle will now apply to the workers who are part of these demonstrations and those who intimidate workers have been informed, you say, that what they are doing is illegal and then soon you will be now me meeting out a disciplinary action including possible dismissal. Are there workers you've now identified who are indeed in the line of fire who will possibly be dismissed as a result of what's happened over these last two days? There certainly are. Many have been arrested already for public violence, public drunkenness, uh, damage to property, uh, and so forth, and those are easy cases to identify. But of course, we've got systems and controls to see who's at work and who's not at work. Uh, and uh, if, if officials do claim that they're being intimidated by others, um, explanations about who those others are are required. The city manager, of course, handles the immediate situation with, with the employees. It's not for politicians to do these things, but in terms of labor law, the l rules are clear. Ultimatums have been issued. Um, but, of course, we are more than happy to speak to uh, employees and the leadership of trade unions and to explain to them that what we will do is to stick to the rules of engagement, which is to go to the bargaining council to argue our case, uh, for them to argue their case, uh, and for the issue to be resolved in that manner. Let me also just say that Samu in particular wanted to hand a petition to the leadership of the city, myself and the, and the city manager yesterday, but that uh, march became so rowdy uh, and there was clearly infighting within the union where uh, bottles were thrown at each other and it wasn't clear who the leadership of, of the, of the uh, march was. And so we said to the national leadership of SAMU, uh, if you can just get your leadership united and in order, uh, we can accept a memorandum in an orderly way, acknowledge your grievances, uh, and we await the national leadership of SAMU coming back uh, to the city about that. Given that position that you still are leaving the door open for discussion between yourselves and Labour as the city, um, Will you hold off, shall I say, on the disciplinary action for now and what you said as possible legal action to stop the strike? By that I mean, will you allow the discussions to go ahead before you reach those two points? No, it's, it's very important that we stick, as I mentioned, to the rules of engagement and um, officials who have committed violence or who have gone on strike illegally must face the consequences. That can't be negotiated over. I am talking more about the gesture of, of taking the memorandum uh, from, from some who acknowledging that uh, and, and addressing uh, the, the employees who, who are marching. That, that we can negotiate on, but in essence, we've got to go to the bargaining council about this issue. And uh, we can't erase misconduct that was committed. Uh, and, and I mean, you can imagine that as much as we respect and value each and every one of our employees because it is through them that we deliver services, at the same time, how do we explain to residents that we don't act against someone who uh, sets a fire to, to uh, property of, of the municipality or destroys property uh, or, or is, is arrested for public drunkenness? If we also have an obligation towards the residents and, uh, and it's that obligation within the framework of the law and of collective bargaining that we are very serious uh, about executing. Mayor of Tanis Lebrink, good to speak to you.